Hey folks, Kristen for Guns.com and so glad you joined me today because we have an exciting head-to-head -head in miniature size. This is the Pocket Pistol Showdown. We have Bond Arms and North American Arms, two well-built American-made mini guns, a mini revolver in North American Arms, and the heavy-built solid stainless steel Bond Arms double-barrel Derringer. if you're watching me right now I know you're already interested in this pocket pistol market and that's awesome because these are two exciting guns that I'm glad to share with you but what are the questions that you want to answer when you're considering these two which one would you want why one over the other well we have to talk about our build similarities and differences here in the bond arms versus the North American arms and we see obviously stature and weight size being that big one but we see with the North American arms, they're mini revolvers. So we have five shots of the rim fire versus the Bond arms Derringer style, which is a big bore two shooter. So two shots of a more potent chambering. We have a nice solid stainless build on both of them, American made on both of them, single actions for both, fixed sights, short range, pocket pistols, both of them intended to get the job done and to be with you when you need it. We start with the Bond Arms and these babies are a handful. These are heavy built stainless steel center fires in some potent rounds like the Rowdy in 45 Colt and 410 shotgun, a hand cannon, but one that's controllable. Or what we have here, the nine millimeter version. Maybe you prefer a 357 and 38 special, that's available as well. But when you want something that's going to have plenty of stopping power, if you're hiking in bear country and you need a boot gun or a backup, Bond Arms is a solid choice. North American Arms does just the opposite. You get that same small frame with incredibly light weight and in rimfire calibers. These are both 22 Magnum. Now that has some stopping power when you're talking about rounds like a Critical Defense or a VMAX or some of Federal Premium's great rounds. It's probably not the best choice for self-defense or hiking in bear country. It's definitely better than nothing, but the size and the weight of this gun means that you will always have it with you because it's so easy to conceal. This is a true pocket pistol that gives you a nice option for the ultimate in deep concealment. One thing that we have to talk about, because you already know that I'm a big fan of both of these, is the limitations. And yes, there are some limitations when you're talking about pocket pistols. This is not something you're going to competition shoot with. It's not something that you're going to hit at great distance. You can maybe do some trick shooting and pull some magic out of your hat once in a while. But this is an up-close and personal protection firearm. It's primarily a backup. They're great guns. You just have to know your limitations. This is the Rowdy, Rough and Rowdy, in 45 Colt. These are the Hornady Critical Defense 185 grain FTXs, two shots, seven yards. Ooh, not far off from the nine millimeter rounds from the other. And a little high on that one, but you know what? In a defense distance, that's still center mass. Now, with the 410, these are high brass game loads, two shots, seven yards, same target. Whew. Now that pattern opens up just at seven yards, but you know what? I don't wanna be on the receiving end of any of these if you're an intruder. Getting ready here for accuracy test at five yards now with the Ranger 2. It's going to be three rounds of CCI bird shot, that rat shot, snake shot number 12, and then two rounds of the CCI VNT varmint tip. Ooh. That shot covered the paper nice and the other one almost right in the center. I'm liking the looks of this so far. I think I'm really getting used to it. Ooh. 
Oh boy, that shot really rattles the paper. Here's our five yard target with the North American Arms, the Ranger 2. There's the two of the CCI VNT, which we see there, that varmint tip in a 30 grain, and the bird shot there, that 22 mag shot shell from CCI, that's number 12 shot, and that thing really blankets this, you see, even at five yards, I'm covering that whole page. All right, so you've seen us on the range. We know the limitations of both of these. It's a short range backup gun, a pocket pistol, a protector for when you're in a jam. So which one is the right one? The answer is simple. Both of them are. I want both of these. It all depends on what solution you need and what answer that you're, what problem you're trying to solve. If you want something that has got some real knockdown power and is going to get the job done and you're not afraid to sacrifice a little bit bigger size and weight and recoil, Bond Arms is the one you need. But if you want something that has the ultimate deep concealment that you can bury in your pocket or in the palm of your hand, that's lightweight in a rim fire with not much recoil, but you're willing to sacrifice that not as much knockdown performance, North American Arms is where it's at. And guess what? Depending on what I'm doing on any day or for any given task, I want one day this one for a backup, maybe next week and if I'm going up into the mountains and it's getting rough, I want the Bond Arms. So the answer is, if you can afford them, get them both and be ready for anything. I'm so glad you joined me today while we took a look at two of America's finest hands down pocket pistols, the North American Arms specializing in rim fires and the Bond Arms specializing in heavy hitting overbuilt center fires. And if you're in the market for a pocket pistol, a Derringer type, a two shooter, these are the two that you're going to want to pick from. The option is yours, but the answer is you're not going to go wrong with either one of these American-made handguns. I'm Kristen for Guns.com. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit that button. Give us a like, share, and subscribe to our channel so you keep up to date on more content like this coming your way.